Okay, welcome back to my kitchen again, everybody. This is cooking with me, John, and this is my kitchen. Today, I have it right here. I'll put the link in it. Like I always told you, food wishes. I get a lot of recipes. Chef John over there, excellent um, source for you. And this is Chef John's buttermilk fried chicken, but we're not doing that. We're gonna take some of this recipe, tweak it the way we want to, and this is what we call John, this John's, chicken tenders. So let's get cooking. Now, chicken tenders. These are basically all the same thickness, but if you get the really thick breasts of chicken, what you do is you take two pieces of styrofoam, or not styrofoam, but um, rental or plastic wrap, and then you flatten them with your flat part of your meat tenderizer hammer. But we're just looking for strips. So I think that's a nice chicken tendy. I could maybe cut it a little bit fatter like this. That's a nice tender. I like to do it this way because it's cheaper because if you buy them pre-cut, chicken tenders are not cheap. So even if they're off like that, this is homemade. You don't have to be perfect like a, what a restaurant or a business has to be like that. This, this is the flair of you cooking. Oh, we're gonna get this fat off of there. We're gonna trim that. This is what makes home cooking so great, because it's yours. We're flattening that out. We're making nice good. So we're getting about three to four chicken tenders per breast. Let's get this fat off. Let's trim that off. You know what? That's good for her. So what we're going to do then is we're going to get this seasoning and then, oh, that's going to be a really nice big fat one. We're going to have this for dinner tonight. Then what's left over, she can have herself for her meal preps. Okay, and then this one, we're just gonna cut this one in half. Chicken is always so hard to work with. That's why if you just take it out of the freezer, <clears throat> sorry about that. I sit there and I start talking and all of a sudden my throat gets all weird and it doesn't do that when I talk on the phone or anybody else. There we go. We got quite a bit, but if you have them slightly frozen, they cut and they're easier. So you don't have to have them fully. Let me wash my hands. Right. All right, now in his recipe, okay, for this, he says, take your chicken, this is for fried chicken, I'll put it up my way and then I'll put it up his way so you could see both of them. But it says to put the chicken in and then you're gonna need black pepper. All right, we got black pepper. And what we're gonna put in there is a one teaspoon of black pepper. I have all my spoons over here. So let's get this. There we go. And then we're gonna just spread that around all over the chicken. Okay, one teaspoon of salt and I'm going with the fine sea salt. I usually do SPGO, but this time we're just doing it this way. And we're gonna spread that all over, okay? What makes this so good is all these seasonings and letting it sit. 
you know. All right, then we need a teaspoon of paprika. Now you could use smoked paprika or you can use, all uh, right, there's the paprika. Smoked paprika, you can use regular paprika. So we're gonna spread that all in there. All right, now we're gonna go down to a quarter teaspoon of rosemary, dried. So I have my rosemary right here. We're gonna spread that around. If it's a little bit over, that's okay. Keep on putting our seasonings back over here that we already used. All right, next is the ground thyme. And that is going to be a quarter two. So there we go. Next is oregano. Now I know what you're all saying. Yeah, you're making your own Italian seasoning, basically. You could just use Italian instead, but I follow this like that. All right. So we got that quarter, that quarter. Then a quarter of sage. Now I have rub saged and ground sage. I'm going with ground sage. All right, sage is in there. Now what I add to it then, right here, is I love dill, and I think dill brings out the flavor of this. So I'm gonna do a quarter of the freeze-dried dill. I think it just adds to it. All right. I add that where the recipe says no. Then you need to put in white pepper, a half. There we go. Now your chicken's going to look crazy, but wait till you get the milk in it. Then a quarter of cayenne. That's it, everybody. That's just to make up this part. So, oh, also what I put in where it does not say is a heaping spoonful of my minced garlic with the juice. We are, I'm a big garlic person. If you notice, most of my recipes got garlic in it. That's the dill and the garlic I add to it. Now, see how that looks all powdery and everything else? What we're gonna be doing is two cups of buttermilk. Just a little bit higher. It's about two and a quarter. So we're gonna pour that in there. Buttermilk is thick. Now I'm gonna whip this up. Hmm, let's use our spatula here. We're gonna mix this all up so it's nice. The seasoning is everywhere. Gets it all over the chicken, make sure you take the chicken and split it apart. Okay, and what we're doing is we're not trying to get any of the seasoning too much on one piece, but uniformly. Now, you could put all these seasonings in first, then the buttermilk. You could do it that way. And then, you know, mix and put the chicken on top and then mix it all in. But I like to do this so I could see that I'm getting every single one coated. There's nothing like globbed up on any piece. I'm separating them. Oh. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Mm, I always put some chives in here too. 
I didn't grab any out of the garden, but freshly cut chives in here would be just downright perfect. So put some chives in here, everybody. I don't have any in the house right now. So, then you let this sit for six hours. Push it, the chicken down so it's all submerged. And just look at how that seasoning all is now, you know? So you have all the seasoning perfectly. And now I'm gonna wrap this up. And now it sits for six hours. Oh man, did I mess up. I did not hit my power button on the audio. So we're gonna try this this way. So welcome to my voiceover. So what I'm doing right here is I'm getting the batter for the chicken tenders. So this calls for two cups of flour. Uh, you know, it's always better to have extra, you know, you don't have to be perfect with it. So what I usually do is I do it that way. And now with the flour, this is what I add to it. Panko seasoning. This to help that. Okay. So I toss a full cup, maybe a little bit more up to you. It's always better to have a little bit more of the flour than less because your hands are going to get dirty. This is going to get messy. You can use a spatula, um, that type of stuff. But now what you do is you add paprika. Okay. And this is a half a teaspoon of paprika, a little bit more. If you want a little bit more color to it, smoke or regular. Then what I do is it's a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, oh, you put cayenne pepper there and, and in here, but guess what? It's not that bad. It's pretty good. Now, let's check this out. Now, we're going to add a half a teaspoon of garlic granules. This recipe calls for powder, but I like the granules. It doesn't have to be perfect or precise. What I did right there is I double-checked to make sure everything was okay with my voiceover. <laughs> now... It's a half a teaspoon of white pepper, okay? And if you notice, I'm not doing it perfect because I put a little bit extra flour in there, the seasoning. And what I change up here is I put some dill in it. I just, that, I just love the dill, and I put that in there. And then I also put some fresh cracked pepper in there. So that is the flour mixture. This is going to be our breading. Now what we're going to do is we're going to mix this all up. Now a lot of people do the, um, like an egg, um, but we got the buttermilk right there. Then they do a flour, um, you know, like that. So this is just, you know what I'm saying, a little bit different, but mix that up really good to get that whole flour. And it is going to get messy. It is going to get dirty. Your fingers are going to be like this. So I have a rack right here. So when I get these taken care of, breaded, I put it on the rack to let it sit from anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes. That's so it can this, this confuse onto the chicken. Now I just go and grab some chicken, shake off all the excess, put it on in. And this is where tongs would work or a bag, but I like it do it this way. And then I just start taking it, pressing, and making sure that all the cracks are full. Because with these chicken, you get little nicks and little crannies. So make sure you move that around, press onto that, and get that. Now when it looks good, and you don't see any more wetness, take it off and let it sit. And that's how we do it. So we're going to do the whole batch this way, and then we're going to get to the frying. So I'm just going to keep on going this way, get your chicken done this way. You're going to get messy. Just understand that. Clean yourself up. Use tongs to cut that back. But just keep on, keep on working this, 
and keep on pressing down until the chicken is the 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 flour is dry and it looks good. So let's check out how we're gonna fry this up and then see how these wonderful buttermilk chicken tendies come out for the wife and see these are excellent for a dinner a little time consuming but you can do it and then what you can do too is if you're gonna do meal preps with this my wife still loves them that way but you could always throw them in your conventional oven or your oven for 350 for five to ten minutes to keep them crisp so let's check how we're gonna get this fried up in our oil all right everybody I got it up to 350 degrees and now we are going to go and plop in our chicken tendies. I made another mistake and I forgot to turn the mic on on the camera. So we'll see how that works. This is not going to take that long, everybody. I'm going to do it in batches of four. That's hot. Watch yourself. So turn that down. I would say about two minutes it will start floating. I got the fan on right now. It will start floating up. I'll give it a turn in about two minutes. It will get golden brown. And then we're going to have it sit over here. Boy, is that just sizzling. We'll have it sit over here on a grate with a paper towel. We have french fries going in our air fryer. Oh, they smell really good. Let's mix up these french fries. We have seasoned fries. All right, they're starting to lift up and float. That's good news. We're gonna flip it. We're gonna flip this one. This one. And flip that one. There we go. Now, this gets messy, this gets a little nasty sometimes. You know, that's why you take your time. And they're all starting to float and these weren't very thick. Yep, that is done. That is about three minutes. I'm gonna go put that on the paper towel. And we're gonna turn that back up to medium. We're gonna get this over onto the paper towel. Let these crisp up. We're gonna grab our next four. These are very thin. One. Remember, when you put it in, watch your fingers. Two. Three. And four. So, the chicken tenders are all done. The wife said they were juicy. They were flavorful. She tore them up. How many did you have? Two, three? ish two or three ish so that means she had quite a bit so and again I screwed up I forgot to hit the little dunk you know been doing five different videos and all that stuff so I'll try my voiceover I'm could be a voiceover star so do the like the subscribe the share the notify button and thanks for coming into my kitchen and cooking with me John and let's see what we're going to whip up next week. 
I'm all done for this weekend. The meal preps are all done. So we'll see you when we see you. And have a great week, everybody. Bye.